The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Lon Aliyu, a mathematics teacher. I'm also your mathematics teacher for Form 2. In this introductory session, we are going to have a general presentation of the syllabus we also have the general objective and competencies to be developed. We have the prerequisite knowledge, which is knowledge you will need to master this Form 2 program. In the presentation of the syllabus, this syllabus has five modules. The first module is numbers and operation in the set of numbers. The second module is introduction to plane geometry. And the third module is solid figures. The fourth is elementary statistics and probability. And the last module is basic algebra. In the first module, we have the following subtopics. The set of integers, we have number patterns, we have fractions and decimals, we have arithmetic processes and proportions, we have real numbers, and we have distances. In the first second module, which is introduction to plane geometry, we have two subtopics which are triangles and triangles. And in the third module, which is solid figures, we have prisms and pyramid. In the fourth module, which is elementary statistics and probability, we have the following subtopic. We have representation of discrete data. We have measure of central tendency. We have probability. And in the last module, which is basic algebra, we have algebraic expression and equations. Now let's look at the objective and competencies to be developed for this syllabus. At the end of this program, you should have cons consolidated the concept that you learned in Form 1, which is a set of natural numbers, integers and rational numbers, fractions and decimals, arithmetic processes, line segment, angles and solid figures, elementary statistics. You will also discover new concepts in this Form 2 program, such as the set of real numbers, number patterns, prisms and pyramid, measure of central tendency, probability, basic algebra, and you will use this new concept to solve real-life problems. At, before engaging into the Form 2 program, it is important for us to recall the definition of natural numbers that we learn in Form 1, integers and rational numbers, it will also be good that we should recall how is to solve simple problems involving ratios, percentages, and proportions, and also be able to recall how to find the surface area and volumes of cubes, cuboids, and cones. Now, in the first module, which is titled Numbers and Operations in the Set of Numbers, we have the following subtopics. The first top subtopic is the set of integers that has five lessons, we have fractions, and we have number patterns with seven lessons. We have fractions and decimal with four lessons. We have algebraic, we have algebraic expression, we have uh, arithmetic processes and proportion with 14 lessons. We have real numbers with four lessons. Now in the first top subtopic, which is the set of integers, we have the following subtopics. We have whole numbers, negative powers, and laws of indices. Now, for our today's lessons, we are going to be treating whole number powers. This lesson has this plan 
for, the, for today. We have the objective, we have introduction, we have the prerequisite knowledge, which is the knowledge that you need to have acquired that will help you to better understand this lesson. We have the problem situation, we have the learning activity, we have the summary, we have exercise of application, and we have the assignment. Now, before, at the end of this lesson, for you, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to use vocabularies involving whole number powers such as the base, the index, the power, the indices, or exponent. You should be able to determine the value of a number expressed using whole number powers, and you should be able to write whole numbers in index form with, the, with, with positive powers. Now, why is it important for us to study whole numbers? It is whole number powers. It is very important because in our day-to-day -day life, there are times that we need to find how to calculate the size of something. For example, how to calculate the area of a, of a square, which is side times side, that is S square, and then we have the volume of a cube, which is side times side times side, which is S cube. Now, for a better understanding of this stop topic, which is whole number powers, it will be good that you should recall how to read and write whole numbers and you should also be able to recall how to carry out operation in the set of integers that you learn in form one now let's look at this problem that we have on the board how can you conveniently write the number 10 million in a different way such that it can enter this small box that we have 10 million has seven zeros 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros. How can you conveniently write this 10 million with 7 zeros in this small box? Look at the size of the box and, this, and ask yourself, how can you conveniently write this number on this small box? At the end of this, our lesson, we'll be able to discover what we can do in order to write 10 million in that small box. Now, let's look at this learning activity. Evaluate each of the following. The first one is 5 times 5. The second is 4 times 4 times 4. The third is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And the, third, the fourth is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Now let's try to look at the solution to this our activity. The first answer is 25. It means that 5 times 5 gives us 25. 4 times 4 times 4 gives us 64. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 32. And 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 gives us 10 million. And this 10 million is what we had in our problem. Now, how can you conveniently in write these numbers that we have, these answers that we have in our activity in a less cumbersome way? If we look at the if you look at 25, you see that 25 can be written in the form 5. Just look at how we have written 25 here. Look at how we have written 64. Look at how we have written 32. And look at how we have written the 10 million, which is our problem, which was in our problem. Now, look at this form that we have written this 10 million. And let's try to fit this form in the box that was given to us. If we try to fit it in the box that was given to us, you will see that this 10 million can conveniently enter into this box that we have here. Now, when you write a number in this form that has been written in this box, it is said to be written in index form. It is said to be written in index form. So it means that if we write a number like this one that we have here, we have two and we have this three. This number is said to be written in index form. This two that we have here is the base. We call it the base. And this three that we have here, we call it the exponent or the power. Now, when we write in this form, you see this form here is called the exponential form or the index form. Reason being that index is the same as exponent or power. But now, if we write it in this form here, we call it the expanded form. And if we write it in this form, we call it the standard form. Now, when you write a number like this, how can you read it? You can say that it is 2 raised to the, to the third power, or you can simply say it is 2 cubed. Now, how can we calculate this exponent? If you look at what we have here on the board, 
you see that this is 2 raised to the power 4. When we write a number like this, it means we should multiply the base, which is 2 here, by itself 4 times. If you look at 2 raised to the power 4, it is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 4 times. The result gives us 16. So generally, if we write any number in the form a raised to the power n, where a is the base and n is the power, it will simply mean we should multiply a by itself n times, which is a times a times a times a n times. Since we are writing, we are multiplying a, it means that we have n of these a's that we are multiplying. Now let's try to apply what we are learning above to do this calculation. If we write this a here, just the a, we write it as a to the power 1. If we take a times a, there are two of the a, so it is a raised to the power 2. Now if we go down and write a times a times a times a, 7 of these a's, it will give us a to the power 7. But if we write a times a times a n times, it means we can write it as a to the power n. Now this process of multiplying the base by itself many times, we call this process repeated multiplication of the base. So it means that since our base here was a, it means that it is multiplication of a n times. Now, from the activity that we just had, we can see that when a number for a number to be written in standard form, it must be in the form a raised to the power n. Where a raised to the power n, a is the base and n is the power. So if I write 2 raised to the power 5, it does not mean that I should write and multiply like this. This is 2 raised to the power 5. It is not supposed to be written as 2 times 5. We said from our activity that it is supposed to be 2 raised to the power 5 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 5 times. So this is how when we write a number in index form we express or we calculate. If you do it like this, it is wrong. You don't do like this. Now, we have learned this, we have learned the, from our activities, we have learned how to do the calculation of index numbers or how to express numbers that are written in index form as whole numbers. Let's try to apply what we have learned and carry out this exercise. The first question we have been asked to do is express the following index numbers as whole number. The first one is 9 raised to the power 2. The second one is 5 raised to the power 4. The third one is 4 raised to the power 3. Now, in the second question, it's a very interesting question. My grandmother's age is in years is written as 3 raised to the power 4. How old is she? In the third question, we have been asked to fill the blank boxes. So, we have been given 1024 to fill the box. So, you have, the base has been given, but the power has not been given. So, you have to look for the power yourself. Now, in the B part of the question, you have been given 10,000, the base has not been given, and the power has not been given. So, you are the one to look for the base as well as to look for the power. Okay, now that you have done the exercise, let's try to correct this exercise together. In the first question, you were asked to express the following index numbers as whole numbers. We have 9 raised to the power 2. Now, let's look at 9 raised to the power 2. Nine raised to the power two. From our activity, we learned that nine raised to the power two can be expressed as nine times nine. This gives us eighty-one. So it means the first result that we have is eighty-one. In the second part, we were asked to evaluate five raised to the power four. Five raised to the power four. It means we should multiply five by itself four times. So this is five times five times five times five. 
4 times. So this is 5 times 5 times 4, 5. It gives us 625. And now the third one, which is 4 raised to the power 3. 4 raised to the power 3. It means we should multiply the base, which is 4, 3 times. So it is 4 times 4 times 4, which is going to give us 64. So this is the result for the first question. First question. Now in the second question, we have, we were asked, my grandmother's age is, in years is written as 3 raised to the power 4. How old is she? How old is my grandmother? Let's do the calculation together to confirm if the answers you had in the exercise are correct. So we have 3 raised to the power 4. We said this means we should multiply 3 by itself 4 times. So this is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And 27 times 3 is 81. So it means that my grandmother is 81 years old. That is the year. This is how this is how to get a year for my grandmother. And in the last part of the question, you were asked to fill in the blank boxes. You have been given 10 1024. And they said you fill this box here and you also fill the box. This box here you were, you were given four. These four here stand for the base. And so you need to look for the power. Since we said to the power gives us the number of times we multiply the base. So we are going to multiply the base to see how many times it will give us 1024. So let's start. We have 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Now if we take 4 times 4 which is 16, we continue. Times 4. It gives us it gives us 64. Now we need to take 64 times 4. To be sure that you are doing your correct your, your calculation correctly, you can get to a rough paper and you do 64 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. You write 6 and you carry 1. 4 times 6 is 24 plus the one that you carry is 25. So 256. It is not yet up to 1024. So if we add another 4, we take 256 times 4. So we have 256 times 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So we write 4 and we carry 2. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus the 2 we carry is 22. So we write 2 and carry 2. 4 times 2 is 8, plus the 2 we carry is 10. Now at this stage, we see that the answer that we have is equivalent to the answer that the, the answer the number that was given to us, which is 1024. So let's count the number of times we have multiplied 4 to have this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It means that the power is 5. So 4 raised to the power 5 gives us 1024. Now in the second part, which is the B part of the question, you were given 10,000. You were given 10,000 and you were asked to get the base and the power. Now, when we look at 10,000, we can see that it is made up of zeros. So it means let's try to see how we can multiply 10. The number of times we can multiply 10 to see if it will give us 10,000. If I take 10 times 10, this gives me 100. If I multiply it again by 10, it gives me 1,000. If I multiply again by 10, it gives me 10,000. So let's, this is a 10,000 that was given to us. So let's count the number of 10. It means 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4 of this 10. And since we are multiplying the 10 by itself, this 10 becomes our base. So we write 10 here. 
and then we write our power which is 4. So 10 raised to the power 4 gives us 10,000. So this is the solution of our exercise. Now that you have gotten this knowledge of whole number powers, it will be good that when you get back, get back home, you should try again to do the practice of it. So I'm going to leave you with an assignment which will help you to be able to check if you have mastered the concept very well. So in our assignment, the first question is copy and complete the table below. If you look at the table, you have been given numbers with powers. If you look at the table here, you have been given the power, you have been given repeated multiplication, and then you have been given the standard form. So when you, you fill these empty spaces here, and you fill this other empty space here, you fill this one, you fill this, and then you fill this other empty space. In the second question for the assignment, it is, writ it is said, a millennium is written as 10 raised to the power 3 years. Express this as a whole number. That is, you have to express 10 raised to the power 3 as a whole number. The third question is, express the number 243 as a number in index form using 3 as the base. So you use 3 as the base and then you find out how many times you can multiply 3 for it to give you 243. The second, the fourth question for the assignment. This is how, what it reads. Mrs. Ndi and Mrs. Owona. Mrs. Ndi and Mrs. Owona had a joint business. Mrs. Ndi contributed 10 raised to the power 6. Why Mrs. Owona contributed 1,020,000 francs to the capital? Find the total capital of the joint business. So you see that the contribution of Mrs. Ndi is written in index form. So you need to write this index number here as a whole number in order to use it to calculate the total capital. Now, our lesson will end here and our next lesson will be on negative number powers. So in our next session, we will be looking at negative number powers. Thank you so much for watching. See you in our next lesson. Thank you. Onatege minga matege nyum Onatege majang matege ndom Mane tambia ninyane njubya yen Ngani bana matege mot Ngani lakiri watege ndong Esotina biya jinkido Mane tambia ninyane